and at the same time I would like to take this opportunity to introduce our humble Sheikh and from amongst our chief guests of today Right now, inshallah, we are coming towards the peak of the mahfil, one of the crowns of the mahfil, one of the jewels of our mahfil, whom we have also all been waiting for. And when I was told to do the introduction of the sheikh, I was thinking what words to use, because the higher the person is, the higher the words, the higher the personality is, the higher you choose the words to introduce the sheikh. So I thought to myself, what are higher words than the words of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa And I would like to introduce the Shaykh by these words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that when the Sahabi asked, Oh Rasulullah, how can we recognize, how can we recognize the true friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And Wallahu al-Azim, when I hear this hadith, in front of my eyes comes the picture of my Shaykh, 
Shaykh al Islam, Dr. Muhammad Tarul Qadri, and I'm using this same hadith because when I look at the Shaykh, he also reminds me and reflects that hadith that when the Sahabis asked, What is the true sign of those that are the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And mine and your beloved Prophet Nabi Muhammad وسلم, replied, When you look at them, it reminds you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. With these words, I am calling upon the great Shaykh, Shaykh Muhammad Hisham al Kabani whose education is as so, bachelor's degree in chemistry from American University of Beirut, Lebanon, medical studies in Louvain, Belgium University, degree in Islam, divine law in Damascus, Syria, studied under Muhaddis al-Sheikh, Sheikh Saleh Farfour, the father of Sheikh Shahabuddin Farfour, who taught in the Minhaj University, Lahore, Pakistan, licensed to teach and guide the council and council in the students in Islamic spirituality from the renowned Hazrat Sheikh Mulana Muhammad Nazim Adil Al Hakani, authority of Hanafi School of Islamic Law in the Middle East, and the world leader of Naqshbandi Hakani Sufi Uda, and surely and surely a saint of this time. I call upon with great love, with great humbleness, with, with emotions, with devotion, with you standing up and raising the slogans of At-Takbir and Ar-Risala, I call upon His Eminence, Sheikh Muhammad Hisham Al-Kabbani. At-Takbir! 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 Ar-Risala! 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 Sheikh Hisham Al-Kabbani! Sheikh Al-Islam Tahir Al-Qadri! Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahi ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil mursaleen. Sayyidina wa nabiyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Amma ba'd. Fanakul. الحمد لله الذي هدانا للإسلام وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله نستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ولا مثيل له في علو شأنه وعظيم سلطانه ونشهد أن سيدنا وسندنا ومولانا محمدا عبده وحبيبه ورسوله أما بعد أو مسلم brothers and sisters I am very honored to be here today in this great event the celebration of the Prophet ﷺ birthday and under the auspices of Minhaj al-Quran which is under the patronage of His Excellency, Eminency Maulana Shaykh al-Islam, Shaykh Tahir al-Qadri and his son Shaykh Hassan al-Qadri and also under my beloved Sheikh, Master, Waliullah, Sayyid Sheikh Muhammad Nazim Al Haqqani. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala give them all long life. In order to continue the message of the love of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I always think about what we are coming today to a situation that is we are so hated because of our actions that we have begin to reduce slowly slowly the existence of Sayyidina Muhammad in our lives and to implement 
the existence of radicalism and extremism in our lives. I would like to thank also Sufi Muslim Council for working hard to bring the message that Prophet ﷺ brought to the world and to the universe. We are trying with the help of everyone and especially our brothers and sisters and our big Sheikh Sayyidina Tahir al-Qadri and Minhaj al-Quran to be standing with us as long as Allah gives us life to do the work that Allah wants and his Prophet Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu wants. As much as they eliminated the celebration of the love of Prophet in the Muslim heart, as much as we become very extreme and very radical. If we want to come back and give a good picture about Islam, we have to increase such important gatherings. Without these gatherings, the West will not understand why they celebrate their, the birthday of their prophets, who are in the same time our prophet Sayyidina Isa and Sayyidina Musa. And we as Muslim, we hate to celebrate the birth of our prophet Sayyidina Muhammad This problem, this sickness, this illness that they put in the heart and the mind of the Muslims, some, some group of Muslims, to hate and to make it an innovation and to make it a forbidden to celebrate the prophet, prophet birthday is what is taking us down and down and down. We can look at ourselves and we say, Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَكُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقُّ وَزَهَكَ الْبَاطِلُ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ كَانَ زَهُوكَ Say Ya Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to them that Haq came and battle went. Battle is down, the wrong, the falsehood is down, the haq is up, justice is up. Means Islam came with justice. Sayyidina Muhammad ﷺ came with justice. If that justice is not within us today, we are falling down and that's why we can see ourselves today, we are not successful. Everyone hates us because of that dropping the love of Sayyidina Muhammad ﷺ in our heart. But congratulations for you. You are rewarded because you did not drop that from your heart. There is a big difference. We hope the others will come one day and learn from you. Learn from these people who are putting these gatherings together. Learn how much they love their Prophet and how much we care for Sayyidina Muhammad in order to bring justice back and to eliminate radicalism and extremism from our life. Now I will go to the main subject which I would like to speak about and I hope that Allah will give me the strength and Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, give me the blessings and my Shaykh can give me the barakah that I can say some words in a short time quickly because it's too late that always someone think. Do you think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if we make celebration on Prophet birthday, or we, exp we express the love of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is going to make a big impact on Allah and his angels, or it is going to make impact on us. It's a good impact on us. Allah and his angels, he said it in the Holy Quran, that he and his angels doesn't care for us. He is making salawat and his angels are making salawat on Prophet from the day that Prophet being created till the day there, is, there will be continuity until eternal life. He is not waiting for us to do salawat. He is not waiting for us to celebrate. Heaven is celebrating. Angels are celebrating. Allah is celebrating. When he said, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, inna allaha wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, sallu alayhi. 
So at the beginning of the first, he said, "Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi." They are already praising Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and making salawat. But for your benefit, if you want to get benefit, you make salawat on Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. They are not in need for our salawat. They are not in need for us. But we are in need for these salawats in order that we can go to paradise. What Sayyidina Muhyiddin ibn Arabi said, I was thinking what I'm going to speak because MashaAllah Maulana Shaykh Hassan al-Qadri, he covered the subject from beginning to end, from east to west, like an ocean roaring at the beach. So I said what I'm going to say and then came the story of Sayyidina Muhyiddin ibn Arabi. I would like to tell you one thing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is witnessing that I'm saying the truth. I was not able to come because my back was so hurting. I was not able to bend down or stand up at around four o'clock, five o'clock. Why I don't know, might be I carried something heavy. I came here and my back was so hurting. As soon as I sat and this event began to happen, my back is completely healed. I'm not feeling anything. No more pain, very little traces of pain, but I am feeling very good and okay to bend down and come up. This is a sign that they give you, Allah, to tell you that you went to the, to the gathering of a salawat on Prophet Sallallahu and birthday of Prophet, okay, we are going to cure you. Take that. So then you can understand how they work. Because it's very difficult to understand Allah, But they give you signals. You have to understand the signals. And I came here, I didn't expect from the son of Shaykh al-Islam, Shaykh Tahir al-Qadri, to be so much educated in such a way that I was really surprised. So, come back to the story of Muhyiddin ibn Arabi. He said, Subhanallah, if not my hand, Sayyidina Nuh and his boat would have sink down when the flood came. My hand saved him. My hand, Sayyidina Muhyiddin Arab, Ibn Arabi, who came in after the message after Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam by 400, 500 years, he is saying that my hand saved Nuh 5,000 years ago. And they asked him, what you are saying, Ya Muhyiddin? Scholars, as usual, as usual, they don't accept anything. They like to see things with their eyes, and they want to see everything literary. Awliyaullah, they look, yanzruna bi nurillah, they look in, with Allah's light. They can see what people cannot see. They can hear what people cannot hear. And that's why it is a big differentiation between a wali and between a alim, normal alim, alim of sharia, knowing knowledge in, in some kind of Islamic teachings or Islamic scholarly, Islamic law or constitutions or sharia or fuqah or hadith or tafsir. But he cannot go deep into the meaning, the inside meaning like what Muhyiddin ibn Arabi said. My hand saved Nuh. They said, how your hand saved Nuh? He said, I am from the descenders from Prophet Sallallahu I am from the offspring of Prophet Sallallahu Sayyidina Muhammad is my grandfather. I am from his family. I am Hussein, Hassani Husseini. I am from Sadat and Ashraf. I am from his blood. So there are three kinds of people. 
three kinds of people within the Ummah al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those who are from the blood of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Hassani or Husayni. Those who are from blood and from sainthood, they related to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, means from blood, from physical, or from souls, goes to Prophet. And those who are only from souls that go to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So those who are Hassani, Husayni, they might be lot around, they are Sayyid, but they have no knowledge of any wilaya issues. But they, have, they are Baraka in the communities. Those who are from blood of Prophet, and at the same time they have this chainhood of sainthood to Prophet wasallam, are the highest level. Sayyidina Muhyiddin ibn Arabi was like that. He said, my hand saved Noah. Why he saved Noah? He said, I am part of Prophet. The hand of Prophet saved Noah alayhi salam from the flood. I am part of that hand. I am part from that blood. That's why my hand saved Noah. And you are here today, sitting here, celebrating Prophet sallallahu love. You are not going out to waste your time on videos and TVs. This is a sign that you are part from Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah. Allah. So, either we are part of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from souls and blood, or from souls, or from blood only. The presence, your presence here is a sign, is a sign that you are going to be with Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, dunya and akhirah. There is no, there is no exceptions. Everyone who was here is going, Allah is witnessing, Prophet is witnessing, awliya are witnessing that we are here for the love of Prophet. No way you are going to be accounted for anything, you will be under the shafa'ah of Sayyidina Muhammad Allah said in Holy Quran, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim, Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Kuntum Khayra Ummatin Ukhrijat Linnas. The continuation, Ta'muruna Bil Ma'roof, Latan Hawna Alil Munkar. But he said, Kuntum Khayra Ummatin Ukhrijat Linnas. You were, Kuntum in the past, you were the best Ummah, Kuntum khayra ummatin, the best of nations. You were the best of nations that has been sent to humanity. That's, that means there is wrong radicalism and extremism there. So he said you were, where you were? When Holy Quran came to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, came, came in Mecca to Mukarrama, we were not yet ummah. Until the message came, until one Prophet ﷺ is being sent as a messenger. So where we were then, means we were, you were the best of the nations that Prophet ﷺ was so happy, proud between all nations in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of promises. So we were there. We were not hidden. We were with Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi after the salatu was salam. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat nas. You were the best ummah. So means our existence was before we come to dunya. We were there doing what we need to be, to be done to those who are not from the ummah to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We were diplomat. In the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala carrying the flag of the love of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to other nations to tell them how much is important Prophet in our life. 
as Sheikh Hassan Al-Qadri mentioned the hadith of Sayyidina Jabir, that when he asked Prophet Sallallahu what Allah created first, he said he created your light, the light of your Prophet, Ya Jabir. So when Allah created first the light of Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there was no creation. Awliyaullah, they, they go deep into the meaning and extract interpretations that they give it to those who are in need for it. And when Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was asked, when Allah created him, and he knew that he was created from the light, Allah's light, كَبَطْتُ قَبْدَةً مِنْ نُورِ قُلْتُ لَهَا كُونِي مُحَمَّدْ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ I took one hand of my light and said, be Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. So what you think, when Allah created that light, and the light of Muhammad was created first, what that light was doing. Did we question? Did we put a question mark? Did we try to find an answer? What prophet, what that light was doing? He was in sajda. He was in other than in sajda. What he was doing? Did you, did we, did prophet, did that light, the essence, because that light is the essence of the creation of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is the atom, the subtle atom, الذات البحت, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the subtle as essence of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam created in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala divine presence. We cannot express it more. There is no language for it. More than that. So what that light was doing, of course that light was under the observation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending, manifesting all his beautiful names and attributes on that light in order to bring it up in such a way as we bring our children up in an Islamic way. Allah is bringing Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa his essence, his, his, his atom of, that he created first. He is bringing it up in order to be able to the, send the message of creation. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as our shiuch, may Allah give them long life and bless those who passed away, they express it, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he put him, has to give him a vehicle in order to be in it. He gave him a house of light from Allah's light that he was there, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu nuru samawati wal ard, mathalu nurihi ka mishkatin fiha misbah. That lamp that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a lamp undescribable, no way to describe it, put the light of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in it and raising him up. When that light begin to sweat and sweat and mashallah the Sheikh Hassan Al-Qadri was explaining about the sweat of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in dunya. What about the sweat of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the Divine Presence? You think Prophet when Allah created him first he was not sweating from Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's manifestation of his beautiful names and attributes? That's what, what happened with it. That's what, when he was sweating and sweating and sweating, Allah sent a voice to his beloved prophet, message, Ya Muhammad, who am I? Who am I, man ana wa man ant? Who am I and who are you? And what prophet said, he said, Ya Rabbi, you are Al-Qahar. You are the subduer. And I am the servant. And Anal Abd. You are Al-Qahar. 
and an al-abd. And he said, Ya Muhammad, he sent a message, Hatiful Rabbani. Ya Muhammad, what do you mean by al-Qahar? Can you define it? And Prophet وسلم, sweating and sweating and sweating and sweating. And we will say later, that's what, what happened with it. He was sweating and sweating. And he said, Ya Rabbi, Al-Qahar to me means the one that can crush everything, can make everything non-existing, can take everything. Al-Qahar is the one that, that beautiful name is the name that Allah can destroy everything and become non-existing completely. يَوْمَ تُبَدَّلُ الْأَرْضِ غَيْرَ الْأَرْضِ Allah said in Holy Quran, when the earth is being changed, another earth means Allah will dissolve everything He can in one, not one moment even. كُنْ فَيَكُونْ He said, Ya Rabbi, Al-Qahar is the one that can crush everything. And Ya Rabbi, you are the one that you crush the sins of your creation. You will eliminate you are the one that you are the eliminator or exterminator of all the sins of your servants. He said, Ya Muhammad, I gave you an ummah. They don't, they don't get tired from doing sins. And I am their Lord that they, I don't get tired from forgiving them. So what do you want better than that? And what is the meaning of Al-Abd? He said, Ya Rabbi, Al-Abd to me is the one that in need for your mercy. And Allah said, Ya Muhammad, I have sent you mercy for humanity. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ He said, Ya Rabbi, did you create any creation? He said, Ya Muhammad, you are the first to be created. And from your sweat, that beautiful sweat, that subtle sweat, that sweat that cannot, no one can smell it. I'm creating my angels, and after my angels, I am creating heavens and earth, and I'm, I'm creating creation. Oh Muslims, that is enough for us honor, that Allah created us from the sweat of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, from that light, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put in a candle, in a, in, a, in a lamp. And this will give us an understanding, and I will end with that because time is running. And Sheikh Hassan Tahir al-Qadri is going to leave tomorrow. So look, the story between what kind of difference. The, you can have many interpretation of that story of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam and Sayyidina al-Khidr. When, when they were looking, when they lost the fish, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Sayyidina Musa to look for someone and he said, فَوَجَدَا عَبْدًا مِنْ عِبَادِنَا آتَيْنَاهُ رَحْمَةً مِنْ عِنْدِنَا وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ مِنْ لَدُنَّا عِلْمَ We have found a servant from, he, they found a servant from our servants that Sayyidina Musa tried to go to study with him. Sayyidina Al-Khidr who is higher, Sayyidina al-Khidr or Sayyidina Musa? Not Sayyidina Musa or Sayyidina al-Khidr? Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam is higher. So when you read this, how one higher than the one who is lower? Go and study with him. That is a sign of humbleness. So what Sayyidina al-Khidr said to him? He said, Inna kalan sabra, you cannot be patient with me. Oh, how Sayyidina al-Khidr, you can say to Sayyidina Musa, you cannot be patient with me. So Sayyidina Musa at that moment veiled himself. He made himself, doesn't know anything. Who told you that Sayyidina Musa doesn't know what you are doing, going to do? What is Sayyidina Musa said? 
ستجدني ان شاء الله صابرا dont worry you will find me patient but finish they are separated because sayyidna al khidr didn't show humbleness to sayyidna musa alayhi salam humbleness is important in our life sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam allah raised his him as a humble one the most humble when he was the most humble allah showed us made all angels all creation everyone to know the reality and the honor of sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in dunya and akhirah and that's why he sent him for isra and mi'raj he didn't send anyone other than sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam also means that story when he went to sayyidna al khidr alaihi salam fawajada abdan min ibadi one one servant of many min ibadina from many means there are many like sayyidna al khidr alayhi salam there are many awliya allah although sayyidna al khidr is a prophet but there are many awliya allah that they are veiling themselves people don't know them except very close circuits around them so what he said abdan min ibadina atainahu how he became so knowledgeable sayyidna khidr alayhi salam because of something that is in that verse because a hidden meaning there atainahu rahmatan who is the rahma means we gave him rahma from the mercy of sayyidna muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam that because of that he was able to know our knowledge wa allamnahu min ladunna ilma we taught him because of that rahma for the sake of that rahma of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam we taught him from our heavenly knowledge so anyone that has rahma in his heart as the definitions that he explained many different definitions of rahma sheikh hasan al qadri so i will not repeat or i will not go through but he went through many of them anyone who has one trace of that rahma will be sure that this knowledge heavenly knowledge will be poured in his heart o oh, muslims let this gathering let this meeting tonight take a message with us to be humble servant to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we not do anything that doesn't allah like and prophets like and to show everyone humility and humbleness and extend our hearts together with minhaj al quran when the, and, and with every muslim moderate and good muslim a believer a true believer to extend our hearts to everyone as prophet extended his heart and his hand and his mind and his body and his soul to everyone and show the best a role model of islam may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us may allah bless us may allah always give our shaykh long life in order they can continue the message message of islam wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اب صرف صلاۃ وسلام کے اشعار ہیں اور اس کے بعد خصوصی دعا ہے میں گزارش کروں گا افضل نوشائی صاحب سے کہ وہ تشریف لے آئیں اس سے پہلے اینول انٹرنیشنل محفل نعت لیبریج روڈ موسک آن فرائیڈے تھرڈ اپریل اسپیشل نعت خان الحاج یوسف میمن افضل نوشائی الطاف شاہ کازمی شہباز کمر فرید